Live well, folks, I cannot believe it has been four years since we last had a conversation with our good friend Brent Roski. Of course, we know him from Roski on Politics. He's a filmmaker. He's a TV show host. He is a political analyst who really has his pulse as to what is going on in the world of politics. Joining us right now, Brent, what's up, dude? Well, it's great to see you again, Lou. Uh, big congrats to you and Jackie. The show's been on. I watch it all the time. Uh, great job to your entire team there. So uh, uh, so happy to be back on the program. And a uh, couple of quick plugs. Uh, KeepIowaFirst.org. We've got to keep the Iowa caucuses. Doug Burns and I started this group to keep the Iowa caucuses first in the nation. And, of course, uh, Roski on Politics is coming back to television on your sister channel, ABC5, on 10-4. 9 a.m. right after Stephanopoulos, we got interviews with all the big hitters here in the state. So again, October 4th, you're not going to want to miss that at 9 a.m. But today, we're talking predictions, buddy. Now, as you know, four years ago, I was on the show, and, and Lou, do you remember that, what happened? Uh, yeah, I remember exactly what happened, because we, we, we talked all about the candidates and who was going to be the realistic winner of the election. And when you told us who you thought was going to win, uh, we all went, okay, yeah, Brett, okay, we, 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 we believe you. Yeah. And, uh, and we didn't think there was any shot in the world that this was going to happen. But you were convinced, because you were there at the beginning when Donald Trump started his campaign and you got to have a, a little rapport with him and you got to see past that curtain, didn't you? Well, what's interesting, too. So, in fact, four years ago, uh, almost to the day, I did call the election for Donald Trump. It was 75 days before the election. Now we're just about 45 days before the election. And uh, I called it for Donald Trump. And I heard it from a lot of folks like, you know, what are you doing? I think you're wrong about this. So, uh Let's jump right into it. My prediction on who's going to win this election between Biden and Trump, I'm calling this segment the ghosts of 2016. Now, first of all, let's talk about who got it right and who got it wrong last time. So 99% of the folks who do this type of work for a living got it wrong. And just a quick rundown, the Princeton Election Consortium, they gave Hillary Clinton a 99% chance of winning last time. Huffington Post gave her 98%. PredictWise, 89%. New York Times gave her an 85% chance of winning. And even 538. Now, 538 uses what they call uh, uh, Sabre Metrics, which is the stats they use in Moneyball. Even they gave her a 71% chance of winning. Now, The Economist, when they kind of did their postmortem of the election, they said for months Donald Trump had claimed that he would do well in what he called the Rust Belt region, which is Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Those states actually, in fact, came up very important in that election. We're going to go through those battleground states, how 2016, how those numbers inform 2020. Now, 538, just to use an example, last time they promoted that they ran their election simulator 20,000 times. And from that, they, they created this uh, metric that said uh, Hillary Clinton was going to win 71 percent. Uh, that was her odds of winning. Now, this year... They are saying that they've run it 40,000 times. They've doubled their electronic, their computer algorithm. And they are saying that Joe Biden has a 76% chance of winning. So they're giving them a 5% bump this year over what Hillary Clinton did. But of course, as we know, uh, Hillary Clinton did not win. She lost to Donald Trump. So the ghost of 2016, why, why is 2016 so important when you look at this election? Well, in my opinion, uh, Hillary Clinton's politics and Joe Biden's politics, these are very similar. This is establishment Democrat politics. Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton have spent most of their career in politics. Joe Biden's coming up on 50 years uh, in elected office. And uh, so their politics, very, uh, very, uh, it's a national, it's very establishment Democrat politics. So let's look at who actually voted in 2016, because it's the same group of people. As we know, we're all just uh, coming up again. We got some new voters coming in, but 2016, CNN reports that they had the lowest turnout in 20 years in 2016. 138 million Americans voted in the 2016 election. That was actually the lowest since Bill Clinton ran for re-election against Bob Dole back in 96. And here's what Fox, uh, Vox.com said about it. They said that means 43% of people eligible to vote simply didn't. Uh, Hillary Clinton got 27% of the voting eligible population's vote. Donald Trump got just over 27%. So what that means is a little more than a quarter of the voting eligible population chose not to vote. Now, let's talk about the youth vote. Everyone says the youth vote. Oh, it's so important. we got to get the youth to vote. So how did they do last time? You had Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, a very important election. 
only 47% of eligible voters, 18 to 29, actually showed up to vote. That's about 24 million votes. So, and of the total vote number, that's about a fifth of the total votes were for young people. Now, how did that vote split? Of youth votes in 2016, 13 million voted for Clinton. Uh, 9 million, though, voted for Donald Trump. So you've only got a 4 million vote uh, lead uh, when it comes to youth voting last time in 2016. And, and there's an old political adage when it comes to young voters. They're All right, always- right. So so we, we're getting down to this. It's going to be an incredibly important election. And and when it comes down to it, the, the numbers, you, you, it sounds like the numbers are leaning toward Biden in some of the predictions that you're talking about here. But the most important thing is we need to cut to the chase here. What does Brett Roski think is going to happen? That's what we want to hear. All right. So we're, we'll, we'll jump ahead. So we've got Michigan just to compare, because I think we're running out of time. Yeah, we are. <laughs> so Michigan last time you had 47 versus 47 percent. And what's interesting about that, the difference is only 11,000 votes. Trump won. He got all 16 electoral college votes. Pennsylvania last time, there was only a difference of a few points. Trump won that, got all 20 uh, uh, electoral votes. So here's what we're going to do. Since I've got folks, I've got 14 pages of stats. You're just going to have to assume that I've got data to back all this up if we're going to jump right to my election prediction here. Uh, I'm not going to comment on general election because that is a that's an irrelevant statistic. That's not how we pick the president here. But I'm going to say my electoral college vote, Joe Biden gets 247, Trump gets 291. Nobody ever calls out electoral college votes. I'm going to say that Biden's going to get either Pennsylvania or Michigan. That's going to affect that. But I'm I'm uh, I'm predicting that Trump wins again, and uh, he's gonna be, he's gonna eke it out by about 20 electoral college votes. 20 electoral college vote margin. Brent Roski on this day, 18th of September, says Donald Trump will be your president after the election of 2020. Yeah, running for re-election, it's a, it's a lot stronger place than he was last time. There's been a lot of uh, controversy as to some of the things he's done in office, but I think that gives Biden a little bit of a head start. But if you disagree with me, you've got half of young voters didn't show up next last time. They can show up to vote. You've got about 20 percent of older voters didn't show up. If you disagree with that, get all your friends and family to turn out. But uh, I do think uh, Trump pulls it out for re-election. Uh, all right, just- we're going to save this. We're, we're saving this. We're flagging this, and we're going to play it back uh, right after the election is over. Roski on politics in October on Local 5. Check it out right after Stenop- uh, Stephanopoulos uh, program. Perfect place for you to be. Uh, people, Rob- Roski on politics, that to be the easiest way to follow you, Brett. Uh, Roski.tv. You'll see brand new promos, so check it out there. All right, buddy. Good to see you, man. Take it easy, my friend. Thank you, Lou. Take All right, care. bud. There you go. Brett Roski calls it. He said Trump in 2020. We'll see if he is right. We'll-